Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Hoffman and welcome to the Dose of Bliss show where I bring you my favorite people to give you little doses of bliss. Today we have Bobby Hover in the go. house of Purpose in Youth. Let's He's got go. a great motivational podcast Thank that you. I'm a huge fan of. Thank you, I appreciate so that. So for my viewers who might not know what your podcast is all about, can you explain a little bit about it? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, my podcast, like you said, is focused on unfolding the stories of passionate people. I graduated college Wow, three years ago now, so August 2016, or May 2016, and I didn't know what I wanted to do after school. I thought, going to college, I'm gonna know what I wanna do when I graduate. And I graduated and I was like, holy shit, I don't know what I wanna do. I knew one thing for sure was that I was not gonna just get a job to get a job. Uh, I wanted to find something I was truly passionate about. And so having a bunch of my buddies around me doing super passionate things, one was a photographer, one was you know making music, uh, one was designing clothes. I was so inspired by these guys being so passionate about what they wanted to do that I was like, man, it'd be cool to create a platform and interview these guys and like talk to them about why they do what they do. So I launched it August 31st, 2016, just started interviewing friends of friends. And tomorrow will be the 130th episode. Congratulations, so, yeah, we got yeah. you on like your anniversary. Yeah, 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 so tomorrow will be 138th episode. We'll be at three years next month. Um, and it's just been like this, I, just, I look at it as like punching a punching bag every single week, just trying to put out as much content as I could possibly create, but it has grown into this beautiful platform of artists, DJs, producers, entrepreneurs, vloggers, makeup artists, podcasters, all different types of passionate people, but they love what they do. What I love about your show too is the story behind it, because yeah. you know there's a video on your page and the first thing it says is that to fund this dream of yours, you drive Uber at yeah. night. You're a podcaster a day yeah. and an Uber driver at night, yeah. and people don't know that's kind of what goes behind it. Yeah. So can you explain a little what that hustle's like? You know, it's, it's so funny. That started when I was in college. I was just doing it on the side to make money. And when I was graduating and now this was becoming an idea and I was trying to bring it to life, I was like, how am I gonna fund this? Like I got college loans, I have to pay for rent in Boston. I have all these other things I need to pay for. How am I gonna fund this? And so I literally, what started as just like, all right, I'll just drive Uber for a little bit and try to figure this out literally just hit four years as an Uber driver. <laughs> so yeah, I, I've, I've grown to just like stand by and love it that I'm a podcaster by day, Uber driver by night. I've had to slay the streets to pay the bills to, to fund this entire project. But honestly, I am so grateful for that platform because it gives me the ability to shoot this on Tuesday in the middle of the day. And exactly. I don't have a boss calling me saying, where are you, you need to get to work or I run my own schedule. So. It has been the greatest thing in my life because if it wasn't for this platform, I don't know where I would be. And so I joke about it too because about a year ago, they sent me a sticker in the mail saying, congrats, you are a top 2% driver. <laughs> and I was like, all right, cool. Now I got a sticker and now I can tell everybody like, I'm the world's favorite bearded man, I'm the world's favorite Uber driver, I'm the world's favorite podcaster, let's go. But uh, yeah, Uber's been how I funded this entire project. I love years. that so much because yeah. so many people have a dream and they're not willing to do necessarily what it takes to get there. And they don't know that people are doing that yeah. behind the scenes and you're owning it. Yeah. And we were kind of talking about this earlier, like how you film kind of behind the scenes because you kind of want to show people the document of where you started. Yeah. You saw my eyes when I, when I, when I walked in, I was just, I was amazed because this is a <laughs> oh, beautiful production. And I'm so grateful for the, the studio that I run out of, a bedroom, as I call it, the bedroom studio and it's literally in my bedroom, like where I'm sitting down with the guests and to the right is literally my bed. And I've just utilized the space. I've just utilized the money and the resources that I have. But I think showing the behind the scenes, shout out to my man Kirk if he ever sees this, uh, having him document my behind the scenes and, and showing the process of bringing these guests into my bedroom has been extremely important because it's just showing the authenticity of what I'm doing to make it work. And I think I'm fortunate because I'm confident. I'm confident in myself, I'm not cocky. I don't think I'm, I'm, I don't actually think I'm the world's favorite beard man. I don't think I'm the best podcaster. I don't think any of that, but I carry myself with that confidence of like, I'm gonna do what it takes to become the best. I'm obsessed with pushing myself towards greatness. And I just wanna, I wanna be as authentic and real as possible because it's, you can't, you can't call me out. I, I can't be more myself. I can't be more authentically myself. And I think in this world that we used to see all the private jets and the cool cars and that was like the life that people wanted to live. People now are rooting for the people, the underdogs. They exactly. want to see people the on the story. come up. They're rooting for the story. Well, also because I call it like shiny things, the cars, and yes. the money, that mm. doesn't make a person happy. No. So those people aren't necessarily happy because they have all those no. things. And I think our generation is starting to 
learn that more. Yeah, I think the internet and social media is really starting to crack and you're starting to really see, like there's this new thing I've been seeing recently. I don't know if how familiar you are with, I think it's called Next Jet. Um, oh yeah, I think I've heard I'm not that. trying to get, I'm not associated <laughs> with them at all, but like people are now taking pics in front of these Next Jet planes to make it look like it's their private yeah. plane. And it's, it cracks me up because I, I see the logo and I know it's not. But it's once again, the internet is now exposing the phonies, the fakes, the people that are trying to create this fabricated lifestyle that they don't actually live. And so seeing that, I've just kind of like loved the fact that I am who I am. I drive Uber, I run a, a podcast out of my bedroom, but I also recognize and appreciate environments like this and coming onto shows like yours because oh, it inspires you. me of like, I'm gonna get, have this one day. You know what I mean? Like I, I know one day I'll get here. Uh, and so moments like this, I'm like, I started, I start, I graduated from a business school and now I'm in West Hollywood being interviewed. Like what, what, what is going on? But it's on? so cool what, what you happening? do too, because so many people want to work from home. Yeah. You've created a job where you, your business runs from home. It's kind of a brand, like welcome to my room. But you know what's funny? I didn't really have another option. Yeah. I didn't have money to buy a studio. I didn't, and I also recognize like with LA, with traffic, I was like, even if somebody offered me, I think a year ago, somebody teased the idea of like, oh, we might have a space for you to use as your studio if you want, it won't cost you anything, but it was gonna be literally like in Venice. And I live in the yeah, valley. That's and that's like an hour drive. So to me, I'm like, nope, I'll keep running out of the bed Rudio. I have no travel. Bed Rudio, I love yeah, that. I'm literally- Has people even thought of you differently because it's in your bedroom? No. See, that's the point. I think people love it more. I had, uh, I've had people come in there and, and that's why I love doing the behind the scenes because we capture their face of them walking in. And if they haven't done the research and see that I run this out of a bedroom, their face is priceless. They're like, whoa, is this, <laughs> this your bedroom? I'm like, absolutely, it is my bedroom. But I've, one thing I've, I've done from the beginning is I treated this super professionally like you are today. You have your cups, oh, you have you. everything like branded, boom, beautiful, whatever you have. It's like, it looks great. But one thing that I've had in the, from the beginning is I've utilized the space. Like I make sure I have branded cups, I have branded coasters, I have branded uh, everything, the logo, the lighting. So. I think that's the only thing that makes them feel comfortable is like I've treated it seriously that I want them to feel like they're in an environment that's being treated professionally. But that's what's cool is people are like, oh, I can't do this because people are, everyone has that thing in their head of why they can't do something. Like I can't do this because it's in my bedroom. No one's going to take me seriously. Yeah. But no one has not taken you seriously. They're just, they admire that you want to do this and you do it professionally and you do what needs to be done and yeah. it comes out great. Yeah. It, it's all, I think. At the end of the day, it's about how bad do you want something and how you carry yourself. So even for somebody that's just starting off, the way you communicate and the way you interact with people is what's gonna take you to the next level. People remember how you make them feel. Yes, it, it, yeah, exactly. Like if you are willing to, if you're communicative with people, if you're honest with people, if you're willing to go the extra mile, people are there, wanna help you. I, there was a, a great podcast I had done about a year ago with uh, a woman named Sabina Gadecki. She's from my hometown. She was an actress uh, in Entourage movie. And one thing she had said, she talked about a meme, and, and it, it cracks me up to this day because I'm like, why do I keep quoting her for this one meme? But if you think about it, it's like, if, if you see somebody on the side of the road with their, their car hood popped up, nobody stops. Everybody drives by that car. They're like, somebody clearly has a broken down car. But if, if you see that same person at their car pushing, trying to push their car, somebody's gonna stop. Somebody's gonna get out of their car and help push that car. So I think it's about, People are willing to help those who are taking that initiative, who are taking that step forward, and who are trying to make things happen for themselves. It's not always about like how many Instagram followers or what has this person done, what's their resume look like? Are they willing to put in the work and they, are they doing what's necessary? Are they looking for a handout or are they just looking for help? Two different things. That's actually a really good analogy yeah. and really true because something I've been thinking about recently is being afraid to fail. People want to be perfect all the time. Yeah. And. You know, I had someone I worked with a long time ago because I left working for a dream job to kind of create my own thing. And sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what am I doing? And one of my old bosses, who's a really big VP at a huge agency, went to me and she's like, that's really bold what you did. I really admire that. Like, yeah. I want to work with you more. But it's probably second nature and, to you now. Well, it's been a few years that I'm doing it, but it, it still goes through my head. And so, you know, I think about again, all the stories that are in your head and people more admire the hard work that someone puts into something. You don't have to be perfect if they know that you're trying because a yeah. lot of people aren't trying, yeah. you know? And I think that's the one advice I would give to myself when I started off was that there is no way for you to fail because you're actually gonna learn so many lessons along the way that you're never gonna fail. Like these, there's little setbacks and there's little speed bumps where you 
things don't go according to plan. You roll out a podcast, there's an audio glitch, or the guest, it wasn't a great conversation. That's fine. Sleep yeah, it off. Keep going. You gotta keep going. But that is the, the one thing that stops people is that they aren't willing to take that first step. And, you know, it's taken me a long time to get to where I'm at. Three years, I guess you could say maybe isn't that long. But uh, once you get going, you realize, and you've probably heard it a million times through interviewing people and people that are watching or listening have heard it a million times. People that are successful always say this. There's no, there's no such thing as failure. And it's true. You learn, you grow, and you find ways to navigate and you just keep pushing forward. But those who are willing to just keep punching that bag, like I had said before, you always find a way to find, find a way to make it work. And always. you do, and we do, and that's why we're here today. Yeah. And that actually goes into my next question because you're all about passion. So interviewing all these people about how they found their passion and what they're doing, mm -hmm. what have you learned from them? Similar to what we're talking about now, it's like they're, they're honest with themselves about what they really want. They have their eyes on a prize for whatever this dream life might be, and they're willing to show up every single day and do what's necessary. And there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes for a lot of these people that we think that they just woke up and they are where they are today, but they have gone through their own mental battles. They have gone through their own struggles. I go through my own day-to-day -day grind of like, I'm trying to literally mentally tell myself every single day, you need to be happy, you need to be grateful. I'm writing down three times in the morning, three things that I'm grateful for, grateful for three times before I go to sleep at night. Like I'm trying to start the day on the right foot and end it on the right foot. Um, but that's what I think it comes down to is like the people that I've interviewed and that's why I've enjoyed interviewing such a wide passion-based podcast is that it's not just music, it's not just artists, it's not just like entrepreneurs, it's all different passionate people. And if you put all of them into a room together, they're all gonna have great conversations because they're just people that have a vision, they know what they want, they go through the highs and lows, the roller coasters, but they keep showing up, they keep going, they don't stop. And that's to me priceless and it, it, it inspires me because I'm essentially just getting a mentor a week. A, yeah, a sit -down that's, conversation. How, that's how I feel here. Like, I, yeah. how, when else are you going to meet successful people and they're gonna give you time to tell you inspiring things and secrets. Podcasting and interviewing, for anybody that's listening or watching, the greatest networking tool of 2019. It really is. Didn't realize it when I started in 2016. I started for the right reasons, but then I got through like the first year and a half and then I had you know something that I could try to leverage to get certain people on the show and I was like, oh wow, this is the greatest networking tool. Because like, as you know, you're interviewing people onto the show, you're gonna make them look good, you're gonna ask them great questions, they're gonna talk about themselves. Everybody feels great at the end of the day. But what's more important is you get to establish that relationship. Yeah. And then you hopefully get to grow. And you have a reason. We were talking about earlier, like how to get people to say yes if you have a reason of why you should meet and why you should do something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I, I, I didn't mean to shut it down earlier of like- Oh no, people, you were trying to get down. But people are like, you know, let's go grab coffee sometime. I get that DM once in a while. It's like, listen, if, if, if life was that easy and I could just do that every day, I would. But there's gotta be true, what's, what's the real purpose behind yeah, Well, and that's what's the secret, the, purpose and you. No, but what's the because of <laughs> oh, why yeah, you wanna grab? Oh yeah, the because, that's yeah, the If you have a because of what you're asking for. Yes, and I love that, and that made me like, I've already started thinking about that since we just talked oh, about that. Oh, like, yeah, for those of you guys watching, what we were saying is, if you want people to say yes, you have to have a reason yes. why you're asking. At least have a because, you have a 95% yes. chance. Even if you're saying, let's get coffee because I want to talk to you. Yeah. It's that like, will be more like what's, the what's more? I, I'm lost. I don't know what my passions are. I'm trying to figure it out. I, I really need some help. That's different. But yo, man, I'm in LA. We'd love to just like link up. It's like, uh, come. I got so much other things I want to do and I need to create and time is valuable. There's only so much in a day. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Yeah, you, have you, a reason for why you're connecting with the person. Have a plan. Like, yeah. it's also important too because like when you're talking to a person, everyone's time is valuable. So, definitely. you know, have definitely. a plan of why you want to meet with the person. Obviously, you have your best friends and you need to hang out and yeah. be happy. But if you're somebody you want to work with, have yeah. a reason of the outcome so you know where you're going. Yeah, you got to go the extra mile and show them the value you can bring to the table. Yeah, and doing shows like this is, it's kind of like therapy. I don't know if you feel that way, but. Absolutely. I'm always the one that's sitting on the other side, your side. I'm just asking the questions and I'm such a people's person. I want to talk so much, but I, I've, I've realized the balance of my show of like, I want it to be 75, 80% of the guests talking and then me kind of chiming in, but I love to talk. You know what I mean? Like that in the beginning of starting Purpose in the Youth, I knew like, I love talking. I love people. I should start a podcast. And that's why I started it. But I love opportunities like this because 
it's just awesome to be part of something like this. Like, I, I really, it is amazing to see this and, and to be part of something like this because it's motivating me, it's inspiring me to, to keep doing what I'm doing and know that one day I could possibly have Well, I feel like the this. same way about you because just because you're in a bedroom doesn't mean anything to me. Your show yeah. is amazing content. You yeah. interview really cool people. Yeah. So to me, there's no difference yeah. in my mind. And I appreciate that. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I, I see myself on a level playing field as anybody else in this space. I don't, and that's important because that's where people can lose the confidence. They compare themselves to somebody who has be, been doing something for eight, 10 years, and they're like, man, I'm never gonna reach that person. Well, you're never gonna reach it if you don't start. You, you don't have take to that do first it. step forward. I think I've, what I've really grown in the last year is just a, a me versus me mentality. I'm up against myself every single day. I, I wanna see other people succeed, it inspires me, but I'm no longer allowing myself to feel down. Oh, I didn't get that opportunity. Oh, I'm not on that show. I don't have that studio. I didn't get that guest. I'll get all of that at some point. It's literally just me versus me. What's the one to three things a day that I can do that's gonna put me that step forward? And before I know it, it'll be you know three, five, 10 years down the road, I'll have a crazy studio. We'll be sitting on top of some LA rooftop drinking margaritas and life will be bliss. I knew you first. Yeah, yeah. I'll be so like, it's, I met it's, him first. it's all just a work in progress. That's that's what I'm a big believer of. Everything is a work in progress. Don't compare yourself to other people. You versus you, and just keep punching the bag every single day. That's but. the biggest thing. We only have a few minutes left, but that's the biggest thing I think I've learned from everyone on the show mm -hmm. is every person I know who lives this motivational mindset and lives this life and has something like what we have going on, they have that routine where they're writing everything down that they want. Yeah. They're constantly talking themselves out of their negative thoughts. Exactly. And I really want to leave people with that thought because people will sit there and stay with their negative thoughts, but you don't have to. You can shout back at them and say, no, yeah. I'm not going to feel that way. I feel horrible today, but I'm not going to let it stop me. I'm just going to, I'm going to go. Yeah. And you're proof of that. Yeah. The power of, the power of visualization is extremely important because it, 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 you might spend three or four seconds drifting off thinking about the what ifs or you know what's the worst case scenario and you're like yeah it doesn't matter what am i what what are my goals where am i trying to go and honestly i gotta give credit a lot of that i've learned is from meditation of just being at one being at you know in the present moment focusing on this conversation and then focusing on the next task that i have there's always and you know it too there's always like this crazy to-do list that when i wake up i'm like i have so much to do yeah, not exactly. enough time in the day like we were talking about earlier about building the right team there's so much to do, but it's like, I can only control what's in front of me in this very moment. And I'm not gonna stress about everything else. And I'm just gonna be in the moment. And I know it sounds like, ooh, he's so like guru meditative, <laughs> that, that, that. No, it's true. Like deep, in, deep dive into meditation, learn about living in the present moment, one breath at a time, 24 hours at a time. It's extremely, extremely You just helpful. have to be grateful for what you have in the moment because it doesn't, if you're not grateful in the moment, you're never gonna be grateful in the moment. It doesn't matter what you have, you only have now. People throw around the gratitude and the grateful thing around a lot and I know social media likes to like, oh, it's like, once again, it's just like gratitude, but no, like truthfully, like look at yourself in the mirror. Like you woke up this morning, you have two feet, you are healthy, you have your parents, like you have food on the table, you have a roof. Like there's actually people in this world that don't have that and that's what I'm forcing myself every single day when I woke up. I mean, I wish I had it written down, but the three things this morning was like, I, will, I, I have the capability to walk to the gym, I have a roof over my head, and I slept in a bed tonight, or last night. Like, that's a simple, it sounds that's a so simple, but it's like, okay, I have no reason to complain. I have no reason to complain. I don't have cancer, I'm healthy. Like, my parents are both alive. You know, it's all those little Life things. Life is beautiful, it, and you need to remember that you don't need anything other than to be here. Yeah, that's just that just reminds you to just, okay, I have everything that I could ever ask for. Now I just have to take advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, I love that. And I wish we could talk more. We'll have to have you back, but we have to kind of wrap it up here. So can you tell everybody where they can find you? Uh, where they can find me? They don't want to find me. Yes, they uh, do. They have to. Uh, if you listen to podcasts, Purpose in the Youth, across all audio platforms, which camera am I looking at? Which one? Which this one? one. This one. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many. I wish you guys could see this. Uh, Purpose in the Youth across all audio platforms, uh, at Bob Bay, across all social media. I know it sounds extremely long and crazy, but it's B-O, three B's, four A's, and a Y. That's a whole nother story for a whole we'll nother conversation. We'll pop it up on the screen. Um, and yeah, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, you can find me there. But make sure you leave some reviews on this podcast channel, wherever this is put oh, out. Oh, thank you, yeah, it's, okay, it's, 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 I know one, even one comment can change. It really can. A motivation for you, and so I think for Lindsay taking the time to create this, show some love to her for what she's oh producing. you're so nice thank you so much guys and thank you for watching you all can follow me at lindsay b hoffman my blog joseph bliss this show airs every thursday on my youtube channel also lindsay b hoffman and if you want to binge watch the episodes that aren't out yet because it's on every thursday you can binge them on ever talk tv or the ever talk tv app 
anytime you want. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll have some more doses of bliss for you next week. Bye. Bye.